Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. Corey, a little Betty Davis eyes here to start us off. My name is Matt Del Vecchio. I specialize in free retirement home search and senior transition support. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Corey, you know, um, a little bit, Betty Davis eyes because this segment is indeed about eyes and eye concerns and you know, um, as we age, it seems to become more and more prevalent, uh, but it could be anything from children and, and all the way up to seniors. I've got a buddy of mine. He lost his eye, unfortunately, to a renovation accident. Um, a wonderful colleague of mine and dear friend, uh, she um, just uh, a couple months ago just woke up with a bit of blurry vision and one thing led to another and like within 48 hours, she is now blind in, in one eye. Just happened like that. Something called temporal arteritis, not arthritis, but like artery arteritis and um, you know how could she know about something like that and and before you know it and so it's very very scary it's a Mm -hmm. topic we've wanted to discuss for a long long time that's why um, you know we're uh, we're very happy to bring this up absolutely and thrilled to have because there's so many questions and that and concerns that come up we really want to highlight what proper proactive eye care is whether it's children or seniors uh, we need to be cognizant and aware of what are the potential challenges and of course moving into how do we improve uh, our situations if we can or keep ourselves healthy so because of all these issues we are thrilled to have in studio with us optometrist dr dan samaha who we're now going to refer to as dr dan dr dan's in the house. Yeah. he's a professor at the university of montreal and he works with retina Glaucoma emer- and emergency emergency and cataract surgery evaluation clinics. Um, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Thanks, so, Dr. Dan, for Dr. being here. Dr. Dan, for being here. Um, uh, so we keep saying how important eye care is, uh, regardless of the age. Let's start with even ch- children. What age should they be going for eye checkups, um, having eye exams done? What... what um, what age and why? Okay, so I mean, eighty percent of learning in kids' learning happens through vision. Um, we recommend eye exams from three years on, mm-hmm. and every year after that. Um, I hear so many stories from parents um, being told their kids have learning disabilities, dyslexia. Uh, then they bring the kids in for the eye exam. We detect uncorrected vision problem. I mean, it's the whole thing is backwards. The eye exam should be done uh, first to all the kids. It's covered. And uh, we can detect any problems uh, going from a myopia, nearsightedness, astigmatism, uh, lazy eyes, or amblyopia. And um, as early as two years old. Wow. It's amazing. You know, you wouldn't think of it, but it, it makes perfect sense, yeah. right? Uh, learning disabilities may be due to, right. to vision issues. And, and like you're saying, preschoolers, uh, it's covered. Uh, why not start? Um, Dr. Dan, we're going to we're gonna bring you to the other end of the spectrum now. And, and why is it important for those 65 and over for the same uh, issues to get your eyes checked out regularly? I mean, even before that, uh, the risk of developing an eye disease after the age of 50 significantly increases. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, glaucoma. There's about 100,000 people in Quebec living with glaucoma and half of them don't even know about it because there's no symptoms to it until the damage is severe. Same thing with macular degeneration. Uh, Both diseases and many others can be detected during an eye exam and sometimes optometrists can even prescribe treatments for them. So what you're saying though, some of the, this is symptomless until you get the eye exam. It's not something's itchy or hurting or. Nope, exactly. You, just, you, you, you lose your vision slowly, slowly, and you're not even aware of it. So what you're saying is once you hit 50, the, you know, that's the red flag age, get, get going, get yes. some eye exams so done. Let's, exactly. let's talk, you're talking eye exams. How often should someone get an eye exam done? So for kids, three years old, uh, first exam before uh, going into preschool, uh, uh, elementary, mm-hmm. sorry, and then yearly after that, and then um, regularly, depending on what kind of eye problems you get, and uh, we would definitely recommend them yearly again at the age of 50 and onwards. That's Dr. Dan Samaha, optometrist, uh, talking to us about proper eye care. Dr. Dan, um, we're going to bring you through the age cycle again uh, to tell us what are some of the most common 
eye issues you see? And let's begin with kids. Okay, okay. we're going to bring you up in age. So with kids, what do you see most uh, definitely commonly? Definitely uncorrected eye problems uh, from staring at the screen up close for very long periods of times. Um, no, we know the kids don't stare at screens. <laughs> uh, no, they don't. Well, even <laughs> speak for yeah. ourselves, right, Corey? <laughs> myopia is becoming a pandemic. Um, kids are becoming more and more myope and getting myopia at earlier and earlier ages. Can you explain myopia? Yeah, so basically myopia, uh, the eye becomes too powerful. B basically, the, the image doesn't, uh, it doesn't form uh, um, clearly on the retina. So it, it forms in front of the retina. So basically people have to squint or they can't see it far. Mm. Uh, so you said myopia, glaucoma. Can you explain that? Yeah, so glaucoma uh, is used to be considered as high pressure in the eyes, but basically it's uh, an optic nerve disease, the optic nerve uh, degenerative disease, which can eventually lead to blindness. Oh, Not always uh, caused by high pressure. And we we're going, we were going through the ages. So when would you see that versus kids? You were talking about screen time. What about as we get older? Okay. And well, in the general adult population, I mean, uh, uh, definitely dry eye. We're getting more and more aware of dry eyes and and the screen time, oh. and causing the, the the decrease in blinking time, um, as well as uh, contact lens hygiene. Uh, more and more contact lenses are being sold online. So uh, contact lenses are being uh, worn overnight when they're not supposed to, not being properly uh, cleaned at night, uh, being worn past their extended lifetime. Um, so we're seeing a lot of increased complications related to contact lenses because of the increased sales online. So there's a lot of patient education to be done on that. Dr. Dan Samaha, optometrist, talking to us about proper eye care, continuing along that, that vein uh, in this rapid-fire question. <laughs> so informative. Uh, you talk about prevention of eye uh, um, issues. So often it's reactive situations, and it really shouldn't be that. So can you give us some good prevention tips for, for good eye care? Again, it could be for different ages as well. Yeah. I mean, UV protection, that's a given. Uh, from dry eyes to macular degeneration, UVs can affect virtually all all parts of the eye, um, uh, and it's so easy to do. I mean, just wear a cap, sunglasses, oh, okay. um, regular eye exams, obviously, the best way to get educated on your own state of health uh, mm -hmm. in your eyes, uh, balanced diet, healthy lifestyle. They've all been, been shown to decrease the risk of disease hmm. in the eyes. Wow. So I wouldn't have very easy that. stuff to do. So let's go back to this uh, UV rays because there's some nice sunglasses out there. But are they all the same? Um, what you what you should be looking for is the little sticker or little information um, coming with the sunglasses that says UV 400. If you see that information somewhere uh, in your package or on the frame, then you know you're getting protected for what you need to be protected for. After that, it's the the, the style and the, the durability, obviously, of the frames, but um, that's up to you, really. Uh, Dr. Dan, just again, other things you talked about. I was surprised you said nutrition, but it's, it's you know, what you're saying is is very factual. And let's bring it to, everyone's got mobile phones and you know, you have the brightness factor. Uh, does, could that make a difference? Should you be lowering the brightness of mobile phones or means nothing? I mean, there's a lot of controversies uh, about blue light, uh, as they call it, for uh, ocular health. Um, there's nothing specifically targeting eye diseases and blue light as of yet. Uh, we know it affects uh, sleeping cycle and and uh, other non-eye related uh, conditions. But obviously staring at the screen for long periods of times, I mean, you're staring at something, you're blinking less, so it will make your eyes drier, uh, more tired. Uh, and kids, very important. I mean, kids have the bad habit of wanting to keep everything up close. So, and, that, and staring at the screen for long periods of time, it can make the kids um, nearsighted. Wow. So there we go, Corey. Less screen time. It's it's obvious, but uh, we need to push it uh, not just for our kids, but Play for outside. ourselves as yeah. well. Yeah. Nice. You know, um, uh, we're going to head out to traffic soon, Doctor Dan. And uh, one of the questions that uh, that Corey uh, uh, wanted to know, which I thought was was brilliant, was. You know, if you ask a laser uh, treatment uh, surgeon about laser eye surgery, well, what's the answer going to be? It's Of course it's great, but we wanted to have an unbiased view from an optometrist mm -hmm. about your thoughts about uh, um, laser surgery and, and trending um, uh, operations going on in laser surgery. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Serrato with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking with optometrist Dr. Dan Samaha about proper eye care, and the prevention of ocular diseases and a whole host of really other important cool topics. So of course, my interest was around laser surgery and laser treatment. 
And what are the, I would say, the pros and cons of laser surgery? I mean, uh, laser uh, uh, for, for uh, vision correction has come a long way. Uh, basically, the people have to be, the patient, the prospective patient has to be properly evaluated to make sure, first of all, he's a good candidate and depending on what kind of laser surgery he wants to go through. But given the right circumstances, the right patient, uh, LASIK surgery can really significantly significantly increase the quality of life, obviously. Uh, for example, in athletes who can't wear contact lenses during sports or pe people who work in very dusty environments who can't wear contact lenses. I mean, but you, you basically have to be evaluated and made sure that you have a good uh, um, surface condition. So what about this new fangle that I don't know and I won't hold you to it, but the idea of, a, I always understood it as something for uh, people that needed distance, but now they're saying even for those that oh, have reading glasses, true or false? True. I mean, it's it's been um, the, the treatment for uh, presbyopia or, or uh, um, age-related difficulty to read uh, has been... Corey, that's uh, you and yeah. me, by the way. Okay, that's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's polite, it's Dr. It's been Dan. around for yeah. a few years now, and uh, it does show promise. I mean, it, it has its limitations. I mean, uh, but it can give you freedom of glasses for several years. Really? Yeah. And that's coming a long uh, ways from what I understand in talking to a few people. We're at that age where, okay, uh, the vision, but uh, if you get the vision uh, for long distances, then you, you're stuck with reading glasses. But I've been told now, laser for reading glasses. So quite interesting. Now, Dr. Dan, um, you are obviously an advocate of getting your eyes checked regularly. A lot of these diseases are symptomless. We learned a lot here, Corey. So... I'm questioning why, and, and we could be just as guilty with our own kids, why aren't we doing it more, especially when Medicare is covering at certain ages? Can you explain yeah. what Medicare covers in terms right. of cost? So Medicare covers yearly exams uh, for everybody under the age of 18 and uh, everybody 65 and wiser. Okay, so it's, it's a shame because in Quebec, less than 20% of kids actually have their first eye exams before going into school. Mm -hmm. And seniors, less than half of all seniors in Quebec get their eyes checked every year. Um, it's covered. And we're, it's covered. we're paying it's, for it with our taxes, so we should take care of it. Corey, you know, that's my business is seniors. And, right. and a lot of uh, slips and falls, mm -hmm. unfortunately, are due to vision issues. You know, not right. seeing something in front of them and tripping. And, and uh, a lot of these things can be avoided. with the, As an annual checkup, it's covered by Medicare, 65 and over. Yes. Is that right? annually. Calendar yeah. year. There's no excuses. Silly question, but is it hard to find an, uh, an optometrist? Not at all. I mean, uh, you can go on the association website, the okay. uh, uh, Quebec Association of Optometrists, plug in your postal code, and they'll give you a list of surrounding clinics in your neighborhood. There you go. There you go. And there you have it. No excuses. For sure not. So let's talk about progressive glasses because I got my first pair of progressive glasses. Um, I've been wearing reading glasses for quite some time, but uh, probably two years ago now. And everyone told me, oh, be careful when you get your progressives. You're going to be nauseous. It takes a long time to get used to them. Uh, it's, you know, it can be very unsettling. I put them on and it was like a fish out of water <laughs> in water. I was like, oh my God, that's what everything looks like? I really walked around blind essentially, <laughs> essentially for a while, but that's not always the case. Can you no, I that? mean, as the, the, the name says, it's a progress progressive lens. So the vision goes from distance to intermediate and to near. Some patients may experience a bit of um, um, distortion because the lens has inherent distortions in it, but it usually takes a few days to get used to. But it's it it can be a lifesaver. Oh, really, of course, eh? you, it 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 uh, it gives all the prescriptions you need for distance and year in one lens, so you don't have to go change your glasses. Well, that's what I was doing. I depending found. on if you're driving or reading or studying or going on the computer, you have all the powers you need in one lens. I have progressive la uh, glasses too, Corey, and, and you're right, uh, Dr. Dan, it was uh, it was a couple days of adjustment, but yeah, a lifesaver is right. You're able to read and, and, and see vision. F certainly felt a lot more uh, safer when driving, especially at night and if there's yeah. rain, uh, so very, very happy I made that move. Uh, not cheap, uh, but it's, it's uh, you know, you weigh that versus <laughs> the alternatives and getting in accidents and tripping and falling. Yeah, Dr. Dan, we have Dr. Dan Samaha with us in studio, optometrist, and there's, there's phone calls and we're unfortunately we're not going to be able to uh, be able to respond to these phone calls there's text coming in with a quick little rapid fire Corey you're going to like this one it's it's about eyelashes these these eyelashes that you and and uh, you even had I think a situation Corey with well, you got I, a, I did, uh, let's be okay disclaimer here I did have uh, extensions at one point but I developed very very bad reaction and rashes my, my extensions IV. have been yeah. working just fine yeah, Corey yours, yeah. yours look beautiful man thank I'm, you 
Okay. What what's the deal with extensions? Is it dangerous for the eyes? I mean, dangerous. It's it's all relative. Uh, we have a debris and microorganisms living on our skin and lashes. The glue that's used for the lashes, the, the little microorganisms love that glue. So they cramp up around it, and the the population of these little living beings on our skin is exaggerated all around the eyes and you can develop allergic reactions severely dry eyes um, so obviously it's it's got to be done professionally and it's not for everybody no. another quick text and we're running out of time here about uh, uh, in the sun tanning beds you know those little yeah. plastic glasses that you wear uh, you have to wear those for a reason I guess yeah, well yeah, hey, I mean what's the reason <laughs> the skin around wear. the eyelids yeah. is is one of the uh, thinnest ones in the whole, the whole body. Uh, so obviously you want to protect, uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, any damage caused by the UV lights. Um, I don't think they're regulated, uh, but obviously if you're going to go tanning, definitely get some eye protection. Well, well, thank you for uh, clearing that up for so many people. You need to understand that. And obviously you have helpfully, helpfully, I made up a word. You've been very helpful in sharing a lot of information in a very short period of time. Uh, I appreciate uh, you coming here, sharing it with us. How can people get more info about proper eye care? Um, like I mentioned before, the association website, uh, website AOQ, um, has a bunch of information on different eye diseases, uh, where to find your closest optometrist. And I also work and teach at the university clinic, so they can look up the uh, Montreal University Vision Clinic website. For so un more University of Montreal Vision Clinic yes. is what to look up. Exactly. And there's tons of uh, information, helpful yes. hints, advice. Exactly. And get to see uh, your good looking face there as well, I guess. <laughs> I might add, Corey, a heck of a hockey player, too. Oh, there <laughs> you go, and there you have it. So, thank you so much again. Next week on Life on Rehearse, we're talking bullying, how to identify it, and what you can do about it. And we're going to be speaking to a mom whose 17 year old son was shot dead by police this past summer. You might have seen it all over the news. This happened in Knowlton last summer. And she will be in studio with us. And she, believe it or not, still cannot get answers. So that will be next Sunday. And you can hear us every Sunday at 4 o'clock listening to Life Unrehearsed.